I'm working through the galvanic cell section of the 2019 chemistry paper, which starts with question 1.8 in multiple choice, which reads as follows. Two hypothetical half reactions and their respective reduction potentials are shown below. Here we have two half reactions. A galvanic cell is set up using the above substances. And immediately what we should see here is that a galvanic cell we know must be a spontaneous reaction. And the only way in which these two half reactions can react spontaneously is if the half cell with the lesser or the more negative cell potential undergoes oxidation. So what that tells us is that substance B in its solid form will be oxidized and substance A in its ionic form is going to be reduced. We can tell this because they have told us it's a galvanic cell and it must therefore be spontaneous and in order for it to be spontaneous the more negative cell potential is always going to undergo oxidation. The more positive cell potential is always going to undergo reduction. Which one of the following statements is correct for this galvanic cell? And option A says B in its solid form is the reducing agent. Now, we know that a reducing agent is the substance that allows reduction to occur. And that means that reduction is in order for A in its ionic form to gain two electrons, something needs to give off two electrons. Something needs to make those two electrons available. And we can see that that is indeed B in its solid form that is making that possible because it is B that gives off those electrons that allows A to be reduced. So option A is correct. I'm just going to go through the other options to show why they are incorrect. Um, B says that A in its solid form is the oxidizing agent. We know that in order for a to be an oxidizing agent, it needs to allow oxidation to happen. Now oxidation needs to aid in the loss of electrons and that is certainly not happening here because it is A in its ionic form, A2+, plus, that is the oxidizing agent because it is taking the electrons from B. So this would be correct if they had said A2+, plus, but because they have said A is the oxidizing agent, this substance has already been reduced and therefore cannot act as an oxidizing agent. The mass of substance B will increase. We know that this is not true because B is being oxidized. That means that this is going to be breaking down and therefore the mass will slowly decrease of our B in its solid form. And the mass of A will decrease is also not correct because as we have shown, A is going to go from its ionic form where it gains electrons and the mass of A is going to increase. So the correct answer to question 1.8 is option A, because B in its solid form is allowing reduction to take place. The galvanic cell section is always going to be question 8 in this exam paper, and question 8 reads as follows. A standard electrochemical cell is set up using two standard half cells, as shown in the diagram. We can immediately see that this is a galvanic cell because there is a voltmeter here which means that it is measuring a voltage that is produced which once again tells us that this is a spontaneous reaction. 8.1 state the energy conversion that takes place in the cell and the energy conversion in a spontaneous or a galvanic cell is always going to be from chemical energy into electrical energy. The energy conversion in a galvanic cell will always be from chemical energy into electrical energy. Question 8.2. What is the function of component Q? As we can see, component Q is the salt bridge, and the salt bridge always has two functions. The first is to complete the circuit. We need to allow for a complete transfer of charge around this entire circuit. We can see that electrons are able to transfer through the external circuit, but we need ions to move through the internal circuit. So the first function of the salt bridge is always to complete the circuit. The second function of the salt bridge is to allow through that transfer of ions to allow us to maintain electrical neutrality. This is a very, very common question in this section, and 
It is sometimes worth one mark where only one of these options is required, uh, but it is sometimes worth two marks, in which case both of these are necessary, one to complete the circuit and two to maintain electrical neutrality. We know that it does that by allowing a transfer of ions to make sure that neither side becomes unbalanced with the charge. Question 8.3 says X is a metal, a voltmeter connected across the cell initially registers 1.49 volts. Use a calculation to identify metal X. Now before we can do that, we know that our calculation is going to have to use our formula for cell potential, which we can see from the formula sheet that tells us that the cell potential is equal to the potential of the cathode minus the cell potential of the anode. But before we can do that, we need to first identify whether this cell over here, for which we have been given all the information, is in fact the cathode or the anode. And the way that we can do that is by noticing that they are telling us that chlorine gas is being put into the system or is being added to the system. It is not releasing chlorine gas, so we are looking for a half reaction that requires chlorine gas. So we use our table of standard reduction potentials that is given. I prefer to use table 4B because it helps to identify spontaneous half reactions. And we look for the half reaction that requires an input of chlorine. And we find that this is the half reaction over here that shows us that when chlorine gas is combined with two chlorine, uh, with two electrons, it forms chlorine ions. And what we can then see is because this reaction is happening on table 4b from left to right because it is gaining electrons then we know that this is the reduction half reaction the reduction half reaction is always the gain of electrons and with the memory technique red cat we know that reduction always happens at the cathode so now we have identified our cathode in this galvanic cell and so we can substitute in the values that we have here the cell potential given as 1.49 volts the cathode cell potential which we have read off that table as 1.36 volts which then leaves only the anode potential as our unknown which allows us to solve to find that the half cell that we are looking for has a cell potential of negative point one three volts and then once again by looking on our table of standard reduction potentials we see that here is a half cell that has a reduction potential of negative 0.13 volts and that tells us that it is the lead half reaction that has that cell potential so in answer to the question here because we know that the half cell that we are looking for has a reduction potential or a cell potential of 0.13 and only lead on the table has that potential they've asked us to identify that metal x, metal x and that metal x is pb or lead question 8.4 write down the name or the formula of the reducing agent so now we know that reduction occurs at the cathode we know that the chlorine gas is undergoing reduction, which means that that reduction is taking place because the electrons are being given off in the oxidation half reaction on this side. And the oxidation half reaction is where this metal X is reacting and giving off two electrons. So we are saying this reduction over here can only happen, this chlorine can only gain two electrons, it can only be reduced because those electrons are being given off here by metal X. So the answer to question 8.4, they've asked for the name or the formula, and it is metal X or lead. They've asked for the name or the formula, so PB or lead will do. Once again, we say that it is the reducing agent because it allows reduction to take place by being oxidized. Question 8.5 says the reading on the voltmeter becomes zero after the cell operates for several hours. 
give a reason for this reading by referring to the rates of oxidation and reduction half reactions taking place in the cell. Now we know after a long enough period of time the concentrations start to neutralize and what we say here is we say that the rate of the forward or the rate of reduction becomes equal to the rate of oxidation or a simpler way of saying that is to say that this reaction has reached equilibrium. It has reached equilibrium because at this point the rate of reduction is equal to the rate of oxidation or just more simply put we are saying that either metal X runs out and there can no longer be any oxidation taking place or the amount of chlorine gas that is being inserted here also stops but they have asked specifically by referring to the rates and so the only way we can answer this is we can say that this reaction has, equal, has reached equilibrium and that means that the oxidation rate is now equal to the reduction rate because they have asked for that specifically. Question 8.5.2 A silver nitrate solution AgNO3 is now added to the chlorine half cell and a precipitate forms. 8.5.2 How will the reading on the voltmeter be affected? Now what we need to see here is firstly that they specify that it's now added which means after all of this has happened and what we then need to see is that silver nitrate is an ionic solution which means that it will be silver ions and nitrate ions. So in answer to the question or in answer to this a precipitate forms we need to wonder what that is and the only possible precipitate that can form where there being chlorine ions present in solution and silver ions is that we have a silver chloride precipitate that forms here. So the, re the question that now asks how will the reading on the voltmeter increase? Now obviously when this precipitate forms that means the chlorine concentration is going to decrease. The chlorine concentration here decreases which means that the equilibrium is now going to be disturbed which means that the reaction can speed up again. Since that reaction speeds up that means that the voltmeter reading is going to increase. And question 8.5.3 we are asked to explain this. Use Le Chatelier's principle to explain the answer to 8.5.2. So once again as we said in 8.5.1 this reaction had reached equilibrium because the rate of the forward reaction had equaled the rate of the reverse reaction because all the concentrations became constant. Now, as soon as we add silver nitrate, the silver nitrate is going to combine with a chlorine to form silver nitrate as a precipitate, which essentially precipitates out of the reaction, which tells us that the chlorine concentration in this reaction is going to decrease. Since the chlorine concentration in this reaction decrease, it allows further reduction to take place with a chlorine gas that is constantly coming in because there are more, there's more space for chlorine ions to join solution once again. Since more chlorine ions can join solution, it allows the spontaneous reaction to occur at a faster rate. And since it occurs at a faster rate, it means that the voltage is going to increase. And so our explanation here, using the Chatelier's principle, is to start out by saying that the chlorine ion concentration, concentration represented by square brackets here, decreases chlorine ion concentration decreases because it has precipitated with the silver. Since this has happened, it now tells us that the forward reaction is going to be favored. Forward reaction is now going to be favored. And once again, the reason why it's favored is because the forward reaction is where we convert chlorine gas by combining it with two electrons to chlorine ions. So since we decrease the amount of chlorine ions present, we are going to favor the forward reaction, which increases the amount of reduction taking place, which increases the voltage. An important note in this question, people are often confused when they see platinum present and think that that is the electrode that is undergoing either reduction or oxidation. Pay careful attention to this because they will often show the platinum electrode 
encased with some substance where there is either gas entering or leaving the system. That then tells you that that platinum electrode is only a catalyst where the reaction can take place. It is just somewhere that allows the gas to settle and for a transfer of electrons to happen.